today we're going to be talking about taking better fishing photos. And it doesn't matter whether you shoot on a DSLR, a point and shoot, or even an iPhone. There's going to be something for everybody. We're going to be going over some framing, composition, lenses, filters, some creative ways to use your GoPro, and we're going to touch on camera settings without getting too technical. So the first choice we have to make is, are we eating this fish? If the answer is no, then releasing the fish unharmed is our top priority. And there's still a way that we can do this and get good photos at the same time. All we have to do is keep the fish in the net and the net in the water until we're actually ready to take the picture. So once everybody's got their cameras out, their framing, their settings all dialed in, now we're going to pull the fish out of the net. But I'm going to keep them really close to the water because we don't want to risk a drop. We don't want to drop them on rocks or on the bank and potentially hurt the fish. And the best way to do this is to actually be in the water with the fish if we can. At this point, we're going to pull them up, take a one, two, three count, and then we're going to put them back in the water, completely submerged, let them take a breath. Let everybody recompose, fiddle with their settings, do whatever they have to do, move around a little bit. Okay, now we're ready again. We're going to do a one, two, three, and now it's time to release him. And the way that we want to release him is keep a hold of his tail, release your front hand, and then let him swim out of your back hand. If the answer is yes, we are eating this fish, then the game has changed. Now we have a lot of time to take pictures. And what I like to do is I like to bleed my fish out in the current. And this really cuts down on the flies and the blood and the bear attractant that's on the bank, making it safer for everybody. So after about 15 minutes, the fish isn't going to flop around anymore, and this is the best time to take your pictures. Uh, any more than 15 minutes and it can start to get discolored or dried out if it's on the bank, and that's not really what we want. We want the fresh out of the water look. And practice during sockeye season can really have you shooting like a pro by fall trout season. Make sure that your memory cards are cleaned out and your batteries are charged. Because the only thing worse than having your buddy looking up at you with a 50 pound king in his hands and you're stuck fiddling with a camera that won't turn on is being in his shoes. Carrying a sunglass bag or a lens cloth is a necessity because there are a lot of times where you'll have a fingerprint, a smudge on your lens that you can't see on the little LCD screen on the back. So just a quick wipe every time you go to shoot, every time you pull your lens cap off, quick wipe, now you're ready to rock and you know that you're getting a quality image. Composure is the single most important part of taking your photo next to having a working battery. This is where you choose what goes in your frame and what stays out of your frame. Every good photo really focuses on one thing, focuses on the subject. So camera angle and perspective can add a lot of depth and dimension to our photos. And holding the fish slightly away from your body can actually add a few more inches. But we want to be careful not to stretch the truth too far because it's going to be obvious and look unnatural. One way that we can save a lot of our otherwise mediocre photos is by cropping. And by cropping, we're actually reducing the size of our photo by eliminating a lot of those distracting elements and making our picture smaller. Now those pixels could have gone to a lot better use, uh, making our subject higher resolution, ending up with a larger photo. Placing your subject dead center, a lot of the times can really plague our shots with that snapshot kind of look. So try placing your subject off to one side. If he's looking to the right, leave quite a bit of room to the right. And this is what we call eye room. One way that we can remember to always leave eye room is by using the rule of thirds. And most cameras have a function that we can turn on that will show us a grid on our LCD screen. And by placing your subject or the important parts of your frame on these intersecting lines, it's gonna leave us with a more balanced image. We don't always have control over where in the river we hook up. If we're on a float trip, it could be right in front of a guy's house that has a bunch of junk cars in his lawn. Or 
We just don't want to showcase the other 20 boats pounding the same mile of river. So depth of field can really save our shot here. What depth of field is, is what part of our frame is in focus. If we look at it as a three-dimensional field, what part is in focus and what part is out of focus. Now on most point-and-shoot cameras, uh, most of, the, of your iPhone photos, uh, even your DSLR in auto mode can kind of give you that everything in focus look, which sometimes is okay, but most of the time it makes it look like a snapshot. So one thing that we can do to control our depth of field is zoom in and then compose our frame. So if we're close to our subject and we're zoomed in, that's going to lessen our depth of field. So our background is going to get nice and soft and blurry or nice and creamy and it's going to make our subject tack sharp. And that's what we really want is to direct our eye to our subject. Having the sun directly behind or in front of our subject usually falls under the don't category. But placing your subject in front of a nice sunset and then shooting with a fast shutter speed can really give us some beautiful silhouettes. Switching to manual mode is going to give us a lot more creative control, but one thing I do sometimes is shoot one photo in auto mode just to see what the camera has chosen for settings. And then I can switch to manual mode or shutter priority from there and kind of tweak those settings to get the image that I'm really looking for. Shooting with a fast shutter speed is going to freeze motion, so like water drops, fish jumping is great for fast shutter speed. Now changing your aperture or your f number to a really low number like f2 is going to let a lot of light in. So when we let a lot of light in, we're going to have to shoot with a faster shutter speed to compensate or our image is going to be blown out and way too bright. When we change our f-stop to let's say f16 or f22, that's going to let a lot less light in. So we're going to have to shoot with a longer shutter speed. At f16 or f22, everything is going to be in focus. So while this can kind of plague uh, an action shot with kind of a snapshot look, that really shines when you're taking landscapes. Your aperture also controls your depth of field. So if I'm shooting at f2, then I'm going to have a very shallow depth of field. But I'm also going to be letting a lot of light in, so I'm going to have to shoot with a fast shutter speed to compensate. So lots of light, fast shutter speed. Very little light coming in at f16 or f22 is going to keep everything in focus, but I'm also going to need a slower shutter speed so my image isn't so dark. One good tip is use your GoPro for stills. That wide fisheye lens just begs for extreme angles, and that's a really good way to hide your background if you have a less than desirable background. Shooting really high down can make your background just the water or the boat. Or the opposite can be true. Hold it down towards the water and then shoot up. That way the sky is your background. That can really eliminate a lot of distracting elements or just ugly backgrounds. If you shoot a lot of video, one good trick to have up your sleeve is to pull still frames from your video. Most editing software is going to let you save one frame as a picture. And the nice thing about that is in one second, you can have up to 60 pictures to choose from. And if you're using a GoPro, this is a great way to get those underwater photos. If your camera accepts a screw-on filter, it should be a no-brainer to get a polarizing filter. I mean, we swear by polarized glasses, so why would we overlook our camera? Now this filter not only brings out more color detail and reduces glare, but it serves another purpose as well. It actually slows down our shutter speed because less light is making it to our camera sensor. So this may not be helpful in low light situations, but on bright days, it can really smooth out our video. A huge bonus to using a filter of any kind is 
just the protection for your lens. It's going to take all the dust, all the scratches, all the beading instead of your original lens and that can save you a lot of money in the long run. So that was a few tips and tricks on taking better fishing photos. So now when you're out having a good time catching some fish, you can get a few more likes on those Facebook photos.